Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, part 14. So in this one, uh, we're gonna continue where we left in the last one. We did create this player screen, but we do want to have this kind of a progress uh, slider who's gonna uh, show to the user like uh, the duration time, like uh, uh, the total time the, the podcast is, uh, is finally. We're gonna also see uh, the current position right there. And we're gonna add here a slider where you can um, where you can uh, finally slide the value and change the duration from there. So for that, we're gonna make use of React Na uh, Native uh, slider from the community. Before that, uh, the slider was from React Native, but now they came from this library with outside now. So to install that, just open your terminal. You're gonna uh, just do yarn add React Native community slider. Right now they are version 3.03. Uh, After when it's done, uh, you do npx pod install. Uh, for Android, you don't need to do anything else. So it should be good in a moment. It takes some time. After that, you want to rerun your application uh, with uh, npx React Native run iOS. Because remember what I told you all uh, from the beginning of this tutorial, each time you install something who touch the native part of your application, you need to rerun it because they need to compile it. So you're going to have access after that to those functions from the JavaScript side. So uh, this is the thing we need. It's going to take some time. So I'll be right back when it's done. So it's finished. It take a good amount of time uh, so now what we want to do is we're gonna create a component so if we go to our project I'm gonna go to my uh, player uh, folder in the component folder so if you want to look uh, component player right there and I'm gonna create a new component called uh, progress slider that TSX and now we do use, if you go to your package JSON, you're gonna uh, check for track player. In track player, we use version 1.2.3. In version two, which is right now uh, in release candidate, candidate, candidate I, I don't know how to pronounce this <laughs> word, uh, RC finally. So they use hooks, but the version we use, it's not yet using hooks. So we're gonna need to use class for that. I mean, it's gonna just go, be a good refresh for all of us who use Oak for like almost two years now, every day. So, because we want to have access to some of the method they gave us to make our life easier, they have already created a, a class component who we can extend, and they're gonna give us the duration, like the current position and the duration uh, with an interval. So, we don't need to have a set interval and stuff like that. They have done that already. So, we're gonna start by importing React. We're gonna create a class. It's been a long time, so progress component like that. And now this progress component coming from React Native Track Player came with uh, some state. You see, they get the state, and the state is position, buffer, position, and duration. So du the duration is the total duration, finally, the, the time, and the position is the current position right now. So uh, first thing we need to render. And after that here, what I'm gonna return, it's gonna be a React uh, Fragment. I'm gonna also export default this progress slider. And what I'm gonna do here, it's I want to also import this slider from React Native slider. And I'm gonna put the slider right there. But just to help us a bit with the design, I'm gonna just copy this thing. I'm gonna paste that right there. And now I'm gonna save, go to my player screen. And if you remember, if we look to, I don't know, like uh, one of the episodes, syntax, if I click play. And now you see the image take a good time also to came. So this is maybe something we can fix later uh, by using fast image and stuff like that because the image came from the web and it takes some time. But we want to put the slider between the the uh, player button and uh, the title. So here we have the title and here is the button. So I'm gonna put a box right there with the progress slider. Now if I save, the progress slider is like that. 
First thing I'm gonna do with the progress slider is the width is 200. I don't want 200, I want him to be 100% width. So take the full space you can. I don't want the, this component to control the width. I want the parent because maybe we're gonna use it later somewhere else, something like that. So from the box here, you can put in a max uh, pad in horizontal uh, medium. And also I want a margin bottom of small. So we're gonna have some space, perfect. Now the progress slider here, we're gonna change the minimum track tin. So this is the track, the color you have here. Right now you see it's white, so we don't see nothing. And this one, we're gonna want to use our team, color blue light, so it's kind of like our branding color. So you see, it's right there. And for the maximum track team player, we're gonna use our team, color blue light, but we want it um, at uh, 20 uh, opacity. So you see, maybe not 20, maybe uh, 30. Perfect. Now it looks a bit much better. Perfect. Now, for the minimum and the maximum value, we're gonna be able to use this at state. And because we extend that, we're gonna have access to duration and stuff like that. So for the minimum value, I'm gonna use zero. And for the maximum value, I'm gonna use the duration. So that's gonna be the full duration of the track okay after that what i want to do it's i don't want to forget is i'm going to put a box here with a direction row align center and justify contain between because here what did i miss oh i forget to import it sorry and i want also the text because here we want to show the text. I want to have two texts. Here maybe we're gonna have zero zero for now. And here at the end we're gonna have maybe like 45, uh, 10. But we don't want a minus to show the user it's what left. So you see right now we have this text right there. Now we want this text to be what are we using right now. So for that we're gonna first create Two things, okay? The first thing is I'm gonna create a get value right there because I like to compute my um, state when I modify that from this kind of place when you do this in class. And I'm gonna call that total time. So total time is gonna return a string. And his job here is just to return. So for now, we're gonna just return inside a string this, that, state, the duration, okay? And I'm gonna replace this thing with that. This is the total time. Now you're gonna see here is the second. It's the second of all the show. And we're gonna also have the current time. We're gonna also return a string. And that's gonna be sorry, this is the state the duration uh, position and now if i put that right there now if i save now you see we are at two seconds so now if i click play you see uh, it's moving uh, this one is not moving because the thing is i just decide to go with the duration but I don't want the duration. I want the duration minus that this that state that position. So now we're gonna have both gonna move, but they don't look <laughs> quite good. Plus, as you can see, we have another issue. It's this slider is not moving with the value right now. You see, I'm uh, at one minute thirty second, and the slider don't move. So for the slider, we can fix it really easy by doing this that state that position. And now it's gonna follow. So you see, if I increment, it's following. So for this, it's perfect. But now the issue is really this time. So for that, we can create something doing this in TDD and stuff like that, but I don't want to lose too much time with that. So I think why not create the function right there? So I'm gonna create a function, build time, and build time gonna take a, a, a total second, okay? And the total second need to be a number, and the goal of this function is to return a string. First thing is we need to get the hour because some shows gonna be quite long. 
And the way you can get the hour from a second, finally, is by doing map that floor with your total second divided by 3600 because 60 second in a minute and 60 minute in an hour. So 60 multiplied by 60, 3600. After that, I want to modify this total second to already uh, get, uh, get remove of the hour with the, I don't know how you say that. Uh, I think it's uh, this symbol. I don't remember what is the name. It's, uh, uh, I don't remember uh, what is the name, but the, the goal is to get like what left from this uh, um, 360 we just got right there. Um, I think it's um, sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at the name. Sorry about that. I have a blank symbol. Uh, I'm pretty sure we don't gonna get it, but you. I'm pretty sure you know it. It's just myself. I don't like to don't know stuff, so I'm gonna take back of the name. And I I know I remember the name every day, so we just uh, have a, a white space right there. So. The goal here is finally to mutate this total second to get removed of the 3600. Uh, 3, and with what is left now, we can get the minute. So for the minute, we're gonna do mat that floor again. But here now is gonna be the total second with modify now, divide by 60. And for the second, it's gonna be also mat that floor with the total second. And now, with this uh, per, um, person symbol 60, sorry about that. So now, so now with those things, what do we want to do? It's, at first thing, I don't want to return the hour. So I don't want to return the hour if the hour is not, uh, is not bigger than uh, zero. So we're gonna do, if hour is bigger than zero, here the goal is to return hour, minute, second. Else, we want to return minute and second. So now, I'm gonna wrap, I'm gonna replace that to be build time and build time. So now if I save, now you see it's much more better. But now one of the issue we got one of the issue we got is you see uh, here we did get the two okay so it's two second but the thing is we want to have the zero two and uh, uh, we always want finally to be two digit and the way you can use that in JavaScript is by doing JavaScript string pad start so what JavaScript pad start do it's a method to finally you you can say you see, in this case, you say, hey, I want this string to always be kind of a, a length of two. If you don't, add this default value. So here we have five. If I say pad start, we're gonna get zero five. So it's really, really nice. Plus also it's always applying that to the start of the current string. So finally, if you don't reach the length you ask, so the two, you can add a default value. So now what we can do in this case, it's saying, hey, I want this minute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do minute str for minute string. It's gonna be equal to, I need to transform that to a string because I think it's pad start, it's, a, it's from the string object, pad start. I'm gonna say max length of two and I want a zero by default. I'm gonna copy that and replace minute string to be second, second string. And I'm gonna replace all the minutes for that and all the seconds for that. And now if I save, you see now we get 303. Like so. And, and now an don't know what is happening right now. So what did I miss? Actual, like, uh, I missed the second. That was the minute. And now you see it's working right there. So it's pretty pretty nice. So if I go further, so remember this do plus 30. So you see it go further, that's perfect. So we've done that. Now, one thing we want to do, it's we want to be able 
to go further with the slider. So first thing to help us, I'm gonna here console log. Uh, I don't need to. What I want to do is I want to get my context here to be able to seek to. Okay. The way you can do this in the class is by doing context type, set it context type equal the name of your context or so player context. And now I'm gonna have access to this context. So if I do on value change here, we're gonna get the value which is gonna be the value of uh, where we want to go in the slider. And now I can say this that context and now I can say seek and I pass the value. Because if you remember the seek, uh, okay, the name is seek2, so seek2, like that. So now if I save and I move my slider, look what's gonna happen. I'm gonna refresh because I think we get, uh, the thing is we did play with the context right there in this case. I'm gonna do full stack, take the, maybe this one, just to do some change. Now you see, if I move it, it go to the end. The reason why it's if we look at our seek two function, okay? If you go to player context and we look at the seek two, we increment the position with the amount we pass. We don't want to do that. We just want to have something. We're gonna say, hey, I want to go to second three thousand, so I'll go to second three thousand. So we can create a function here called go to. Who here gonna take an amount as a number? And his job is going to be the same exact stuff as that, but now go with just the amount. Now I'm going to pass this go to function to my player context type. I'm going to go to my player context type here to just type the function like that. And I need to have a null default. Perfect. And now if I go to my progress slider, I can change that to be go to. So now if I, if I go here, you see now, I can really move where I want because that's the beauty of this value change stuff. Here, they're gonna, they're gonna give us the value we want. So you see, if I click play, uh, if I go there, you see the value? And now we just get a crash. This thing, it's really because of the simulator missing some memory. I have a lot of stuff right there. But if you search back, As a thing, like when you want to also play with your stuff, play with the real device. But you see now, it's the value gonna give you like uh, the position you really, really want to go to. So it's really, really nice for that. And I get a crash again. So it's something to check maybe why we did get a crash, but I'm pretty sure it's just memory issue and this is something we should fix for sure. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Again, this is part 14. The code's gonna be in the de uh, the code's gonna be in the repo, and the repo link is gonna be in the description. So I hope you enjoy, and we're gonna talk in the next one. Bye, everyone.